nope, this wasn't clickbait. You actually can do this in Microsoft Access. So we're going to have three charts here I'm going to show you for a demonstration. Check this out. It's a bubble chart. We're doing this in Microsoft Access. And yeah, we got a heat map here. Look at that. Cross tabs. Pretty neat. And check this one out. This one's interactive. All of our access data can go into any of these. We're just using Plotly as a framework. So let me show you how to do this. Check out these features. This is going to be pretty fun. Before, so what you want to do is you want to go to plotly.com slash JavaScript and look at all these different types of charts you can put your Microsoft Access data into. So let's pick something kind of simple for now. Uh, and you can play around with it. And obviously, you can ask questions if you are stuck. Let's try a bubble chart here. And so what you want to do is you want to get it to work in a text file before you put it into your Microsoft Access VBA window. So what you can do is you can scroll down. A lot of times you'll see something here that says try it on CodePen. That makes it really simple. If you've never used JavaScript or HTML before, let me show you what to do in this instance. So you can see right here it works right there, right? So what you want to do is you want to open a new text file. Text document, that's fine. We'll open this and we're going to save it as an HTML file. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to get the HTML here and the JavaScript. So first, let's get this. Let's highlight, right click, copy, and we're going to throw that into this right here. Okay, and so you can see right there, that's where the plotly chart is going to go. That's the div ID. And then anytime you use JavaScript, you want to have the, the script part there and then the end script part. And we're going to throw the JavaScript code right in there. So you want to do is you want to grab all this, right click, copy, and it doesn't have to be perfect right now. You just got to get it to work and then you can engineer it from there. All right. So once we're good, let's go ahead and file, save as, make sure you save as type all files and then go ahead and hit save. And let's go ahead and give it a try. This isn't perfect yet, but that's okay. This is a start and we can work with this. We can add a legend, we can make this wider, we can change all this stuff. We're just getting started here. All right, why don't we go ahead and get to our data set here. All right, so I have a data set of providers. So I have different types of specialties. I have the type, I have how much their caseload is, their salary, and whether they're permitted to write prescriptions. So you can see those two rows there don't. So what we want to do is first, we want to create a button. And this is going to generate the chart. This is going to go into that table and get some data and create a cool graph chart. And it's going to be awesome. So let's go ahead and save this. All right, now we want to get to our VBA window. We want to highlight the button, right click, properties, on click. And then we want to go to the bottom option there. Okay, since there's a lot of code, what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste in the code here. I'm going to label it really good. And I'm just going to go over each section pretty quickly. Otherwise, this is going to take over an hour. And I don't want to do that to you. Okay, so this first section here, this dim fs as object, what we're doing here essentially is holding a reference to a file system object. So this is kind of useful for when you want to create, read, or change a file as part of our application. Okay, right here, we're getting the path to the local folder where the access file is located. So basically, uh, in the end, we want to be able to save our HTML file in the same location that our database is saved in. Okay, and we're defining the HTML path here. So basically, local, current DB path, so wherever the database is saved. Right here, we're creating the HTML file, and that's what it's going to be outputted in. The chart will be. And then right here, we're setting up some, uh, you know, database parameters. This is our query right here. So what we're saying is anybody who can write prescriptions will be in the chart. Those that do not, there were two cases, they will be excluded. And so if you don't have any criteria, you can just get rid of the where statement. But in this case, that's what I want to do. Okay. And then... Provider types and caseloads, those are our variables that we want to go into the chart, so our y and x-axis. All right, and right here is very important. We're looping through the query result to build an array, basically. So uh, what we're doing is going through like the first row, the second row, and the third row, and we're just creating an array, and that's what's going on right there. Okay, 
And then sometimes when you do a little bit of text wrangling, you know, you have some weird commas and stuff, especially if it goes into plot like that. So what we're doing here is we're getting ready extra spaces and some commas. Right here, right in the middle there, that's where we're going to put in our HTML and JavaScript code. This is just a framework for right now. So we'll get to that in a second. This one's pretty simple. We're just closing and saving the HTML file. We want to release these objects or basically make them do nothing. Once we're done, we're just, we're, we're done. Okay. And then right here, we're going to actually open the HTML file. So as soon as you hit the button, it's going to load the data. It's going to generate the HTML file and then it's going to open it automatically. It'll look really cool. It'll also save it into your folder though too, if you want to look at it later. Okay. All right. Let's go back to our HTML file of test here that we made earlier of just a sample from the Plotly website. All right, I'm gonna open this with Notepad. I'm gonna drag this over from my other screen here. And we call this thing text. All right, so what we wanna do here is for each line, we want to go file.writeline, and then we want quote and end quote, okay? And we wanna do that for every single line here. Okay, when you're done, you should get something that looks a bit like this. So you got the file, right line, and then you get the quote at the end. So let's go ahead and highlight, right click, copy. Put this back in the VBA window, right there between those two. Okay, so I wanna put real data in here now and get rid of this mock stuff here. So what you wanna do is we wanna get rid of these numbers. Okay, and then what we wanna do is we want to add a quote right there. Okay, this little and sign. I want to type in provider types. Another and sign. Okay, quote. And then we're going to do the same thing right here, except with caseloads. Okay. And let's see what happens. Oh, we got to add a comma right here. Now let's see what happens. Okay, we got something, it's not perfect. I'm gonna show you how to make a couple tweaks, uh, but at the end, I'm gonna just give you my full code and uh, you know, optimize it in a way. So I don't have to spend 10 more minutes showing you how to do every single little thing here. Okay, there's a few things I wanna fix here. So first of all, these four values, they correspond to the old four values that we had here, the manual ones. But now we're looping in our data set here and we have more than four values there. So if this isn't gonna work out, we can fix this in a little bit though, no problem. Now, if you actually know how many rows of data you have and you know the values, you could, you know, say you had 20 here, you could put 20 different sizes here, corresponding to each value. But let's not do that. Let's change the width to 1350, make this a little bit wider. That's an easy thing that we can change there. Also change the title. Now we can call this something like provider caseload by specialty. And then one more thing that we can do is we can add an X axis. So let's go like this, file, right line, X axis. Let's give this a title, call it provider type. All right, so that should do it. Let's run it and see if it looks a little better. All right, it looks a lot better. So yeah, we're gonna have to do something about those bubbles here because uh, they don't correspond to largest size, but this looks better overall. That's a little crammed right there. We can fix that as well, but we got a better title, a lot wider. I think it looks, it's a big improvement for sure. So a couple things to fix here. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna send you the code uh, in the video description, um, but I'm gonna show you what the final result looks like and show you the final code real quick. First, let's see the result. So this looks pretty nice. There's a couple things that we have here now. So now these are proportional. So this has the biggest size. We have an X and Y axis title right there and right there. So let's look at the code real quick. And I can just kind of show you what I did. And again, I'm gonna put this in the video description, a link to it. So a couple things that I did here. Um, so this right here, this is making the bubble, basically the bigger the size, the bigger the bubble. And that was a little tough to do, but that's what we did right there. Um, 
And then the margins right here, what was happening was that in the this part right here, this provider type it was like right there. So I added a little bit of padding right there, like you might with CSS or something. Okay, I ended up with 1400 as the width, 600 for the height. I was okay with that. And I also had a little bit of spacing right here and right there. And that's about it. So if you have questions, please let me know. This was a lot of fun to do. I might want to try stuff like geocoding, some heat maps and other stuff. If that's something you might be interested in, let me know in the comments. I'd love to do something like that. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you found this helpful. Please subscribe and take care, everyone.